So now what we're going to do is based on whatever knowledge we just acquired regarding backend, regarding the, you can say connection with the servers, right? Regarding the fact that how databases work, we talked about how MVC actually works. Now we have a lot of pieces of the puzzle. Now what we have to actually do is we have to actually start connecting the pieces of the puzzle. And this is what we are going to do today in this class. So you can see I have prepared a folder shop cart e-commerce backend. So we are going to, what we are going to do is as a project, because it's always good to learn things with respect to a project, right? So we are going to make kind of like a backend, uh, a complete end to end backend project for a um, e-commerce website, right? We are going to call it as shop cart and we'll be having some reference API that will try to uh, you can say mimic as much as possible, right? But this is going to be the agenda for today. And in this project, we are going to learn everything. We are going to understand everything that we talked about the validation layer. We talked about the fact that there is, there is something called as controllers. We talked about the fact that there is something called as routes, services, models, repository, a lot of things we actually talked about. We're going to start looking at them one by one, step by step. Okay. So now let's see what we'll do is as the initial step to set up a basic NPM project, I'm going to do NPM in it. It will ask me a bunch of basic questions. I'll just keep all of them default. Is this okay? Yes. And you can see if I open this in VS code, you can see a basic package.json has been prepared for us. Okay, cool. Now what we are going to do, we are going to install some packages. First package that we are going to install is going to be express. Okay. One more package that we are going to install is nodemon. Here we go. Then what we are going to do is we are going to write a script npm start. We'll say npx nodemon index.js. Okay or uh, let's call it like this npx nodemon source slash index.js so our main server file where we actually set up the port and the express object and everything we are going to keep that inside source slash index.js so i'll create a new source folder you can see there is a new source folder and i'll create a new file index.js okay here what i'm going to do is i'll take express is equals to require express const app is equals to express we'll get express app object app dot listen okay for the timing i'll just hard code port 3000 i'll give a call back console dot log server for shop cart is up Okay, cool. And now what we are going to do is we'll say npm start. And you can see it is able to successfully detect our index.js file inside the source folder, right? Why I'm keeping a source folder? Because all of our backend logic, setting up the servers, setting up the models, repository, controllers, everything, I want it to be segregated out inside the source folder, right? Because you can see outside the source folder, there's a node modules folder. When we will push this code on uh, GitHub, then we do not want to push node modules. So I want to keep it separated, of course, right? Why do you not want to push node modules? Because this is a very heavy folder altogether. Pushing it on GitHub is absolutely unnecessary because if somebody clones this project, maybe based on their machines configuration, these node modules might not work maybe because this is for my own machine or for my version of node, right? Apart from that, there is a package.json and package log.json. This is good. Now let's do one thing. Let's create a new dot git ignore file. Inside the git ignore file, I'll say node underscore modules. Save it. And now what you can do is you can do git in it. If you do git status, you can see no node modules coming up. I'll say initial commit 
and we need a remote so let's set up a project on github and let's do one thing new repository shop cart e-commerce backend okay and i'll create the repository i'll add remote uh, i'll check out the master branch and i'll push the master and if i refresh you can see a basic bare minimum e-commerce backend is up i'll add a new readme dot md file as well i'll say project setup instructions okay so the first instruction is clone the project how do you clone the project copy you say git clone shop cart e-commerce backend okay this is good second step is to move into the directory of the downloaded project how do you do that you say cd shop cart e-commerce backend okay what's the third step install node modules how do you do that in the same folder you do npm install and let's say turn up the server by doing npm start okay this looks good added readme and here we go so if now you will refresh you can see i've added some basic set of instructions so if you are at this point of time like you are actually you were actually looking at my code and if you want to start code along or you want to follow along the code you can follow any of these steps and if at any point of time if you want to uh, clone the latest uh, you can say uh, commit you can actually get that so these are the basic setup instructions i'll add more setup instruction because we are going to add some environment variables and everything but this starter package is something that we are good with so one more step that we are going to take inside our setting up part is going to be installation of dot env so we are going to install dot env here we go and what i'm going to do is inside the source folder i'm going to have another folder config Inside the config folder, I'm going to have a file serverconfig.js. Inside the serverconfig.js file, I'll say const dot env is equals to require dot env. Okay. And we need to call dot env dot config. Okay. So this config method we have to actually call. And then what we can do is we can say module dot exports. Right. We can say port as uh, let's do one more thing uh, let's create a new dot env file we'll add this dot env file in git ignore dot env save it okay so i don't want to push my environment variables i'll add the instructions in the github readme instead so i'll say port equals to 3000 right so this is good this is good because and why do we not want to do it why do we not want to do it is because of the fact that inside these environment variables because this is a backend code there can be some sensitive information as well for example the credentials to connect to a emailing server maybe something like that right so for that kind of a case like it because already on the front end we have very less sensitive information so it was still okay to push the dot env on github although there also we should not do it but in the back end we should definitely never take a risk to expose our environment variables directly on a public platform like github and now here what i can do is i can say process.env.port save it we'll go to index.js 
okay and here we'll say um, const port is equals to require we'll say slash config slash server config and we can say that we are going to start our server on port 3000 okay here we go now one more one small thing just to be sure about the fact that let's say if somebody doesn't configure the .env file if somebody forgets the .env file then also we should try to have kind of like a fail safe mechanism that goes on so a good practice would be to check if process.env.port exists then you are going to return that port otherwise you should return 3000 so what will happen in this case let me show you so let's say inside my .env file i'll keep the port as 3001 okay and i'll say npm start can you see the port started on 3001 now let's say inside my environment variable there is no port 3001 now the port started on 3000 what's happening here is that when you are trying to access the port from the env file if the port variable is found in the env file it will access it but if it is not found then we will keep the default port as 3000 as simple as that okay so this is what i have done here right this looks good and yep let's see anything else no so let me just uh, quickly do one thing inside the readme i'll actually add few more steps create a new dot env file in the root directory of the project right you can do it using let's say vim dot env okay so in case you don't know how to create a dot env file from vs code or something i've given a command and then add the following environment variables to the dot env file to the dot env file what are the environment variables we need to add we need to add port is equals to value of the port value of the socket port okay currently we just need one environment variable and then we are going to turn up the server okay let's push this much this much amount of code added dot env push so now if you will refresh you will see there is a new instruction coming up here and you have to actually create a dot env file something like this okay so just for like uh, you can say help for the help of the community or whosoever is actually working on your uh, project or using your project for their help generally what people do is they actually create a dot sample dot env okay a file like this sample dot env and in sample dot env we just put put some random uh, you can say variables or something okay let's say port 3001 exposing the port like this is not harmful for us right but let's say later i want to expose something like a uh, secret key right something like secret key so actually what will happen is inside your dot env you'll be having your actual secret key maybe some alphanumeric secret key is there but inside the sample dot env you can write some secret key example something like this Right, you can write something. So at least they understand how the structure of the overall .env file looks like. This is the agenda. So, so a lot of time people actually do it. I believe it's a good practice. So and we don't want to add the sample .env inside our Git ignore because we want to expose this sample .env to GitHub. This is again as I mentioned to make sure that the people understand what should be the structure of a .env file. Okay. Added sample.env get push and now if i refresh you can see there is a sample.env coming up that people can actually directly refer that how the structure of the .env file should look like 